Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at working with Sir. So this is aimed at roughly about grade seven GCSE. Please do download the worksheet from the website and have a go at each of the questions for yourself. OK, so on to question number one. This is fairly straightforward. Write the following thirds in the form A root B. So basically, if we look at root 12, what we know about root 12 is that's the same as saying root four times root three. And the square root of four is actually two. So therefore, well, that's going to be 2 root 3 and that would be the answer to the first question and what we're going to do for the rest of these questions is do something fairly similar at least for section number one anyway okay so please do stop have a go all right so the next question then is root 48 well root 48 is the same as saying root 16 times root 3 so therefore the square root of 16 is 4 that becomes 4 root 3 and that would be the answer to the second question. Okay, on to the third question. We're going to use the same technique for each of these questions. Okay, so with the third question, we've got uh, 2 times root 50. Well, that's the same as saying 2. And I'm going to use a little dot here, which basically means multiply. It's just a little bit neater to write it like that. So it's the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 is actually the square root of 50. Well, the square root of 25 is going to be 5. So it's going to be 5 times 2, which is 10. So that's going to work out as 10 root 2. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too complex. All we're doing really is just kind of sort of ignoring the 2 right at the very beginning until we need to multiply it out. Okay, so let's have a look then at part D, which is going to be 7. Again, I'm going to leave that out. And it's going to be root 4 times root 5. Okay, well, the square root of 4 is 2. 7 times 2 is 14. So it'll be 14 root 5. And that would be the answers then to question number 1. Question number two just gets a little bit trickier, but again, we're going to use largely the same sort of principle. So we'll move on to part two. OK, so with part two, what we need to do if we're adding these thirds together, we need to make sure we've got the same base number. OK, so with these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually... Um, uh, change each of these numbers to a base of root 2. So therefore root 8 is the same as saying root 4 times root 2 and then 72 is the same as saying the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. Well the square root of 4 is going to be 2 so I can write that as 2 root 2. Square root of 36 is 6 so that's going to be 6 root 2. So 2 root 2 plus 6 root 2 is equal to 8 root 2 and that's the answer to part a of the second question and again throughout the rest of part uh, of question number two and all the different parts I mean, it's the same ideas really each time okay so let's move on then and have a look at the next one well root 1000 is exactly the same as saying root 100 times root 10 and then root 90 is the same as saying the square root of 9 Square root of 10, okay. Well, square root of 100 is going to be 10, so that would be 10 root 10 minus 3 root 10. So the answer to this question would be 7 root 10. And that would be the second or part B of the second question. So let's move on then to part C. Okay, so part C, we've got square root of 125. Hopefully you're getting the idea now. That's 25 root 5. And this is minus, this is going to be a bit of a strange answer, um, I think, because we're going to have a negative value. It's going to be 5 root 5 minus 10 root 5. So that's going to be 5 minus 10, or 5 root 5 minus 10 root 5 is minus 5 root 5. And that would be the answer to part C. So a negative root, perfectly acceptable. Negative thirds are no problems at all. But sometimes you're going to come across them. OK, let's look at part D, the final part of question number two. OK, so question number two, we've got uh, this one a little bit trickier there. Uh, we're going to be working through um, some, you know, a little bit harder numbers to deal with. But hopefully you'll get the idea with them. So I've got two times root one, two, five. Well, that's the same as saying two. 2 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 5. OK, so then I've got plus root 80. Well, that's the same as root 16 times root 5. OK, so 2 times the square root of 25 is 5. So 2 times 5 is going to be 10. So that would be 10 root 5 
um, and then this one is going to be 4 root 5. So I'm going to add those two together and I'm going to get equal to 14 root 5. And that would be my answer to part D. OK, let's move on then to question number three, which is more of an expansion. But again, we're going to use the same sort of principles. OK, so the expansion of this, we're going to write it like any other expansion. Now, I know there are ways in which people expand. Some people will use uh, partitioning methods. Some people use foil. I, I, I tend to use something called a crab claw. OK, but hopefully we'll all end up with the same answers. I'm very aware there's a few different techniques with these sorts of things, but hopefully we'll be okay. So uh, I'm going to use my working, hopefully that'll be okay to you. So 3 times 3 is going to be 9, and then 3 times minus root 5 is going to be minus 3 root 5, plus 3 root 5, so I know those are going to cancel out, and then I've got plus times a minus is a minus, and it's root five times root five is root 25. Now I'm very aware that some people will kind of bypass that a little bit because to simplify this, we can get rid of those two, nine, and then we've got minus root 25, which is actually five. So therefore we end up with nine minus five. So the answer on that part three is actually going to be four. OK, so this is about halfway through the questions. We're about six or seven minutes into the video. So we're going to move on towards the end of the video uh, and see how you get on. They do get a little bit more complex from here on in, but let's move on. OK, so on to question number four, which again is an expansion. So let's see how that works for us. We're going to use the same principle as we did before. We're going to say two times 1 is going to be 2, and 2 times minus 2, uh, minus square root of 2 is going to be minus 2 root 2. And then I've got plus, I'll leave it as 1 root 2, although I appreciate that you might write that just as root 2 on its own. And then I've got minus times a plus is going to be a minus, so that's going to be square root of 4. Now I'm very aware that some people might do that bypass again, and you might not write 1 root 2, but just for the purposes of this particular video, it's just a little bit easier to see it. OK, so let's just now simplify this. So I've got um, 2 and this is 2 because the square root of 4 is actually going to be 2. So those two will cancel themselves out. This becomes minus 2 and then we've got positive 2. And then I've got minus 2 root 2 plus 1 root 2. Well, that's going to give me a total of minus 2 or if you prefer minus 1 root 2. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on to the next question, which is going to be question number five. So question number five is a show that question. Now, it's important that we do show that or show each stage of the working. So what they are interested in seeing here is how you're actually logically working through these types of questions. These are usually about three marks, something like this for type this type of question. You need to be fairly methodical in the way that you work it through. OK, so. So let's have a look at the first bit of it. Well, I'm going to expand it out. I'm going to write that as 4 plus root 5 multiplied by 4 plus uh, root 5. OK, and then I'm going to use the same idea of expansion. 4 times 4 is going to give me 16. And then I've got 4 times root 5 plus 4 times root 5 is plus 8 root 5. And then I've got root 5 times root 5 is root 25. OK, so hopefully you can see this is going to be fairly straightforward because I get 16 plus 8 root 5 plus 5. And 16 plus 5 is going to be 21 plus 8 root 5. And that would be the answer. So although it looked a little bit tricky to begin with, it wasn't too bad as we were working through it. OK, we're almost done on this video. We've got two more questions to go. Please do download the question, have a go, add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. Uh, let's move on then to question number six. So I'll just move this up a little bit. Uh, so question number six. Now, this is a little bit trickier, but it's fairly OK as you work it through. It just looks a little bit hard. So two more minus the root of a squared is the same as saying this, OK? And I'm going to expand that out. So 2 times 2 is going to be 4. And then I get minus 2 root a, and again, minus 2 root a. And then I got a minus times a minus is a plus, 
and root a times root a is going to be a. And you'll notice that if I then tidy that up, I get 4 minus 4 root a plus a. OK, now if we go back to our original question, you'll see actually we've already been given the value of a as 3 because it's actually here in the square root. OK, so therefore I can rewrite this if I substitute this as 3, it's going to be 4 plus 3 is going to be 7 minus 4 root 3. And actually, that would be the answer to the question. And therefore, A is going to be 3 and B is going to be 7. OK, so with those types of questions, don't get too faced with them. You need to just kind of work them out fairly logically. And sometimes they actually give you quite a bit of information. OK, in this particular case, we already got the value of A. OK, then final question on this particular video on certs. So let's have a look then at uh, probably a little bit trickier. And it is show that that can be written as that. So I'm going to again use the same sort of principles where I'm going to write this out first as 4 root 5 plus 5 over 5 plus root 5. Now, one of the difficulties is here is that we're crossing over into something called rationalizing the denominator. So I will put a link to this in the description and also through the uh, uh, through the cards or something like that on this particular video. But please do have a look at another playlist and I'll give you more examples of these sorts of things. So in order to rationalize the denominator, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the bottom by 5 minus root 5. Now if we multiply the bottom, we have to multiply the top by 5 minus root 5. So just to tidy it up, we're kind of going to end up with something like that. Let's look at the bottom first, because the reason we've done that is we're going to end up with a whole number. And that's the most important thing with this. We, what we don't want is a third at the bottom of the screen. OK, so let's have a look. 5 times 5 is going to be um, 25. And then I've got five, a minus 5 root 5 plus 5 root 5 is going to cancel out. I've got a minus times a plus is a minus. It's going to be the minus the root of 25, which is actually going to be minus 5. OK, now I did that very quickly, but hopefully you were able to follow the logic. Please do expand this out for yourself and just check that that works for you. OK, so the top, the numerator, we have to expand out anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 4 root 5 times 5 is going to give me 20 root 5. And then I'm going to get 4 root 5 times root 5. Well, root 5 times root 5, as we've already said, is root 25, which is um, 5. So it becomes 4 times minus, uh, minus 4 times 5 is going to be minus 20. Then I get plus 25. And then finally, I'm going to get minus 5 root 5. Now, I'm very aware, again, this is probably a little bit challenging, but do take your time working through this. You'll see. Hopefully, it'll work out for you. If not, put a comment below, and I'll put you the playlist of um, these sorts of questions. OK, so let's have a look then at tidying that up a little bit more. I'm going to take this up here. OK, so if I have a look at this, I've got... Um, Minus 20 plus 5, well, that's fine. That's going to give me 5. And then I've got 20 root 5 minus 5 root 5. That's going to give me plus 15 root 5. And that's all divisible by 25 minus 5, which is 20. OK, so we're now in a position where all we do is simplify this particular fraction. And that should give us the actual question in the first place or the answer to the question. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these up. I'm going to say that's the same as saying 5 over 20 plus 15 root 5 over 20 and then I can simplify those to 1 over 4 and 3 over 4 because we've got the same denominator I can write that over 4 and that becomes 1 plus 3 root 5 exactly the same as the original question okay do definitely appreciate that last question was a little bit more challenging please let me know if you have any problems with it I'll always come back to you I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video